I'm Yvonne Buru. I am a scientist. I am now an entrepreneur. I am Kenyan and I believe strongly in the capacity of Africans to solve our problems. I'm an immunologist by training. I went to school to study the immune system. Today I've I spend a lot of time in the academic world, but now I've kind of left a little bit that model. I am an entrepreneur. What I'm doing is building a global network of African scientists and health professionals. I spend a lot of years in science, and there's a part of me that honestly believes that scientists have to speak more about the work that they're doing in the lab, so that societies and regular people are more aware of what's going on. And so to the extent that I have the opportunity to speak about my work so that it's available to a general audience, I'm always willing to do that. And also because I believe that um, more women, are, the more visible women we have uh, in the realm of science and in society, the more opportunities it will open up for young girls to see those examples and then potentially want to go into those careers. Next Achilles. So Next Achilles is actually an amalgam of two words, Nexus and Achilles. So Akili, every Kenyan knows, because Akili is brain, and Nexus is the meeting point. So for me, this is the meeting place for African brains. And the inspiration before, uh, for Nex Akili is that I am a scientist and I did most of my schooling abroad. And for the longest time, I was asking myself what I can do to bring my expertise back home. And it wasn't always very uh, clear to me because I was working in a specific um, research domain called immunotherapy and I didn't know of any places here that I could work and continue to do that work in Kenya or in, in most African countries and so I realized that this is a problem that a lot of people in the diaspora are facing. They have specific skills that they want to be able to apply in the African context but they're not always able to find the collaborations or the teams because they're not known and so I decided to create this, this uh, platform so that it can be as a link where someone can say, hi, I'm an immunologist and I'm a Kenyan immunologist living in France. The other one can say, I'm a Kenyan immunologist living in Germany, in Australia, in the US, it doesn't really matter. But to be able to connect professionals across geographies and also connect them to their colleagues back home, like in Kenya or in Uganda or in Tanzania, or wherever they are on the African continent, so that they can start collaborating on shared interest areas of research. So I'm imagining this as a sort of LinkedIn for scientists and doctors, and the whole idea is for people to collaborate and to address research questions together. Numbers show that the gender gap is real. I think the question is more why is it there? Why do we have fewer women in science? Because uh, when you look at all the positions of like principal investigator, or if, all you have to look at actually is even the number of awards that are awarded, for example, at Nobel Prize level, and then you go lower into who are the directors of research, who are the directors of research institutes, and you see there's obviously a, a clear imbalance between men and women. So it's not just a question of women actually being interested in these fields, because when you look, you see that the, there's lots of girls that are registering for PhD programs, and you have more women graduates coming out of PhD programs, so the question is about them progressing along the career ladder and actually making it to leadership positions. So it's real, the, the bias and the, the, the non-representation of women. And the question now is how to get them along the path so that women can be more represented. I think what it really needs is for society to be more supportive to women's careers and particularly to maternity. The cost on a woman's career of childbirth and family is too heavy. And so most women end up taking a back step in order to support families and men don't have that block. And so to the extent that men can be more involved in the home, I think that will be a huge step towards getting women to further up uh, their career progression. You know, when she has to make decisions about should I take care of my family or of my career, a lot of times she has to make the sacrifice. And I think when men get more involved in the family and in the home, then the, the burden is shared and then you don't have this big sacrifice being held just by the mother. And I think that's what has to change in our society. I would say, uh, don't doubt yourself so much. I'd say uh, you're 100% capable and you can do it. Not that I didn't do it, but that I had a lot of self-doubt going along. And I think that stuff that was installed earlier on, like in primary school, when you get messages like, the boys are the ones that are supposed to be really good in science and math. You grow up actually thinking that. But the truth of the matter is you're just as good and you're just as uh, talented. I'd 
say I would say to to reach the hand back and pull up more women along the pipeline. I think the biggest uh, support system we can have for young women in science is more established women in science. So I try to do that to the extent that I can. But I think that's honestly the best thing that more established women can do is to pull up more women along the pipeline. Uh, actually, it's fellow scientists. The people that most inspire me are the people that are doing. I, and I know a few doers. I know people who are taking time out of what they're doing, like their scientific accomplishments, for example, or what business accomplishments or whatever, to go and do mentorship to go and lift up uh, their communities because they're building like a library in their community or they're doing. The, the people who are doers really inspire me because I think in today's world there's a lot of people who are speaking but there's not that many that are doing. And so I'm particularly attracted to stories of people who think about where they came from and try to find a way of being useful in that setting. My hope is that we can actually show the world what we are capable of. I am like fundamentally optimistic about our capacity to industrialize, not just to be like the rest, but to lead the world. And I see so much potential, I see the way that the youth um, address their problems, how they speak out, how they express themselves through creative uh, arts, through science, through music. And so my hope is that our leadership will recognize this and and some already have which is great but to actually be the force that makes it become bigger and not that extinguishes that desire to progress and as long as that's the case honestly that's all that we need to get us organized and to lead the world so this reminds me of one of the most inspirational interviews I ever watched was Condoleezza Rice, you know, the former Secretary of State. And she said, someone, she said, people ask her all the time, what should I do in order to become just like you, to follow the path that you followed? And what she tells them is, well, if you want to do exactly what I did, you should start off as a failed piano major. And the reason she says that because that's what she did. When she first started out, she wanted to be a piano major. That didn't work out for her, and then she ended up getting into uh, political science, diplomacy, and so on. I think that the most important thing that I have learned out of my journey is that everybody's path is actually quite unique. And so, you have to leave room, which is what Condoleezza Rice says, you have to leave room for serendipity. That there's going to be a mix of factors around what your talent is, what your capacities are, the things that actually make you really passionate and follow that voice that says, I care about this thing and I care about it deeply, and then move towards actually being the best at that thing. If you care about music, then be the best that you can be at that. If you care about art, if you care about science, if you care about geography, then really just be really good at that. And that in itself will take you where you need to go. And that's the contribution that this world needs from you. So for me, that's actually, like, that's some of the best advice I ever received because it made me stop thinking that other people's paths were better than mine. It made me realize that mine is actually really good for me and that within that, I can, I can actually have the impact that I want to have. In 10 years, in 10 years I'm, I'm expecting Nexakidi to have grown into this really global brand. I see African scientists like really interacting with each other with no concern for geographical boundaries. I see, uh, I see African science being really vibrant and dynamic and contributing like these new discoveries to the world. I see myself probably working in a setting that allows me to at least have some impact on the, politi on the um, uh, policies that are put in place as regards to you know, health and how it's financed and how it's, uh, it's made sure that it's accessible to communities. I want to stay in this space and I want to have an impact in this space and so in 10 years I hope that the work that I'm doing between now and then actually allows me to have a voice that counts in that domain. My new one. So uh, I saw something that really struck me. It said, uh, achieving your goals is not a function of time. It's a function of clarity. And that struck me because a lot of times we have, we, we have some goals that we know of, right? Like I want to, I don't know, I want to build this network of scientists. And in fact, it's very achievable. 
But sometimes you tell yourself, yeah, but this is really hard. It's going to take me, I don't know, I'm going to give myself five years to achieve that. It doesn't actually need to take that long. What it needs is for you to know exactly, to be really clear about what you want to achieve. When you're clear about that, time no longer matters because then you're taking all the steps that you need to take in order to get to that goal. And so my advice to myself and to others is seek clarity in what your objectives are, seek clarity in where you're trying to get to and who it is you need to get around you in order to get there. Once you're clear on that, achieving those dreams will be so much easier.